Hey everybody! Today, we're going to prove that the intersection of a cone and a plane gives us a conic section, and in particular, focus on the case of an ellipse. Before we begin, let's start off by looking at some important properties that we will refer back to later. First, one of the defining features of an ellipse is that, given any point on it, the sum of distances from both the foci to that point always remains constant. Secondly, if we look at a sphere and we look at lines tangent to that sphere, if these lines intersect at some point, then we know that the length of these line segments must be exactly equal. The proof of this is simple enough and is left as an exercise to you. Now let's get back to the cone. As you can see, the intersection of the plane and the cone certainly looks like a good candidate for an ellipse, and we just want to go about finding a way to prove this. If we were to pick two points inside this curve and show that the sum of distances to any point on the shape itself is constant, then we would have successfully shown that it is an ellipse. Now, the following very clever idea was posed by a French mathematician named Dandelot. And he suggested placing these two spheres inside the cone so that they are both exactly tangent to the plane at one point and to the cone at these circles. A reasonable guess we could make at this point would be that the two points on the plane where the spheres are tangent to it are the foci. Let's show that this is actually the case. First, let's take an arbitrary point on the intersection curve and then look at the distances from this point to the two foci. In particular, if you can show that their sum is constant, then we are done. The key to showing this now lies in looking at this new line, which is on the cone itself and goes through our arbitrary point. If we focus our attention to the upper half now, we can see that both the red line on the cone and on the plane itself are both tangent to the Dandelin sphere by construction, and also that they intersect each other. From earlier, we know that both of these lines must be of exactly the same length. We can now apply the exact same argument to the purple lines on the lower Dandelin sphere, and also argue that these are both of exactly the same length. So, the sum of distances to the foci from our arbitrary point is exactly the same as the length of this line. Here's the kicker now, and I'm sure you saw it coming. Notice that the two circles, which the Dandelion spheres are tangent to on the cone itself, are parallel to each other. And because of this, no matter which arbitrary point we picked on the curve, the line going through it, touching both of these circles, would always have exactly the same length. That's cool, right? And that's it! We've shown that no matter which point we pick on this curve, the sum of distances to the foci, which is the same as the length of that line, is constant. So, by our definition earlier, the shape we have must be an ellipse, and the two points at which the Dandelion spheres are tangent to the plane are the foci of the ellipse. That's it, we've concluded the proof. Thanks for listening in and have a nice day.